Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to solve few problems on DBMS. So let's discuss few very important problems. The very first problem in which a relation is given and based on the relation, we need to identify the non-trivial dependencies. So here actually we are going to find out not valid that means invalid non-trivial dependency. So what is non-trivial dependency? Let's say if I say an attribute is capable to drive another attribute or uniquely identify another attribute. So let's say if I'm saying A implies B, then B is functionally dependent on A. Right. But we can say this is a trivial kind of functional dependency if B anyhow is belongs or is a subset of A. So if this is true, then we can say this is a trivial functional dependency. Okay. We need to identify non-trivial functional dependencies. So all these are given as non-trivial. Because C is not the subset of AB, A is doesn't belong in the subset of C, B doesn't belong in the subset of C and so on. Right, so all are non-trivial. Now we need to find out which is not valid out of these. So if you want to validate AB implies C, you'll find out the combination of AB. So I write let's say A comma B and this side I'm writing let's say C. So if you find out AB, it is 1, 10 in the very first row and it is mapped with x, y, z. The next row is also having 110. If same value is getting repeated, then the mapping must be same. If we get different mapping, then this dependency doesn't hold. So again, we are having the same in C column x, y, z. Now rest of the rows like 120, it is mapped with x10. And another row, let's say 2, 10, it is mapped with x, y. So that means this dependency or functional dependency holds good. So there is not a problem. Now let's check the another. So this is this is not invalid. That means it is a wrong answer because we are searching for invalid functional dependency. C implies A if you check. So C implies A whether it is valid or not. You are saying x, y, z can uniquely identify 1. So the mapping of XYZ is with 1. It should not be violated. There are two occurrences of XYZ and both are mapped with 1 only. So there is not a problem. There is only single occurrence of X10. There is only single occurrence of XY. So there is not a issue. We need not to check for these. Because XYZ is mapped with 1 only wherever it is occurring. We can say this function dependency also holds good. So there is not a problem. So that means this is a valid functional dependency. So this is not a right answer because we are looking for invalid. Now C implies B if you check. C implies B again X, Y, Z is the C and if you are checking for B, B is having value 10 in first row. And when next time also X, Y, Z is occurring here, then also the same value 10. That means there is no problem. It doesn't violate the mapping kind of thing. So this also holds good. That means this is also a wrong answer. So the right answer will be D. Now if you want to check how D is invalidate, invalid functional dependency, you can check it. D is saying D implies C. And D implies C means 100 is mapping with let's say XYZ. 200 is mapping with XYZ. Now focus here. There are three occurrences of three occurrences of 100. 1, 2 and 3. And if D implies C, that means all 100, these 300 must have same mapping. So here the 100 is having mapping with X, Y and Z. Next time it is getting mapped with X10. There is a problem. Next time again it is having a different mapping. So 100 is getting mapped with X, Y. That means it does not hold good. So the answer is D. Now move on to the next question. Consider this relation which is having six 
ए बी सी डी ई एंड एफ एट्रीब्यूट एंड दीज आर दी फंक्शन डिपेंडेंस इफ यू कंप्यूट द क्लोजर ऑफ ए बी द क्लोजर ऑफ ए बी विल गिव एस ए बी बिकॉज इफ यू आर अवेयर अबाउट एट्रीब्यूट ए एंड बी वी आर ऑलरेडी हैविंग ए एंड बी नाउ वंस यू आर अवेयर अबाउट ए बी ए बी कैन एम्प्लाई सी सो दैट मीन्स वी गेट टू नो दी सी एंड इफ वी आर अवेयर अबाउट बी वी गेट टू नो डी एंड इफ वी आर अवेयर अबाउट ए एंड डी विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी फाइंड आउट देन वी इज कैपेबल टू फाइंड आउट ई ऑल्सो दैट मीन्स द आंसर विल बी सी कंसिडर दी फॉलोइंग फंक्शन डिपेंडेंसी फॉर अ रिलेशन दिस एफ वन इज गिवन लाइक दिस एंड एफ टू इज गिवन लाइक So F1 is a set of functional dependencies, and F2 is given another set of functional dependency, and we need to check whether F1 and F2 are equivalent, or F1 covers F2 or F2 covers F1. So when it comes, which functional dependency covers which functional dependency? How we can check it? So let's say if you believe or assume that F1 covers F2. That means all the functional dependencies of F2 must be satisfied by the given functional dependency of F1. So let's check the very first one. A implies B C. Whether it can be achieved in F1 or not. So if only A is given, whether we will be able to get the value of B and C. Let's check it. So if A is given, A implies B. That means we can uniquely identify B. and if we get a b both we can find out value of c so that means by having the knowledge about a we can be getting value of b as well as c so that means it is okay it is satisfiable by the given functional dependency of f1 now let's check this one so d implies a e now if you want to validate d implies a e in functional dependency set of f1 d can give you a c and d can give you e also so that means d is capable to give you a as well as e so we can write d implies a there is not a problem so that means this is also satisfiable with the help of given functional dependency of f1 so we can say this thing f1 covers f2 is true now let's check whether f2 covers f1 or not so let's write f2 covers f1 if f2 covers f1 the same thing we need to apply all the functional dependency given in f1 must be satisfiable in the given set of f2 so let's check it the very first thing we are going to check let's say a implies b is given in f1 so here A implies B. Now it is directly given. A implies B C. That means it is satisfiable, so no problem. A B implies C. So here you are saying only A can derive B and C. And if you give A B both, obviously we can derive C. So this is also satisfiable in F two. Now D implies A C. So D here giving you A and E. And once you are aware about A, you can get B and C. So that means you can. satisfy this dependency d implies ac d implies e d can derive a as well as e so that means it is also that means you can say this statement is also valid it is also true so when you are saying f1 covering f2 and f2 is covering f1 that means both are equivalent so the answer will be c now let's move on consider the following functional dependencies for a relation r Where these are the set of functional dependencies given. Find the normal form. So when we check the normal form, try to first check B C N F. And the condition that any of the relation will be in B C N F if there are functional dependencies given like this. Let's say X implies Y, and X is a super key or key. So if X is a key. then you can say this is the restriction which need to be applicable on each and every functional dependency of the relation then only the relation will be 
claimed in BCNF. So let's check this thing. Now, if you are saying AB implies C, now let's check whether AB is a key or not. If AB is a key, A must be AB must be capable to get all the attributes of the relation. So AB will obviously give you AB, not a problem. This functional dependency says that once you are aware about AB, you get to know C. And if you are aware about AB, you get to know about D and these are the all attributes. So that means AB is a key. So this, the condition on AB implies C is true, right? As per the requirement of BCNF. And here also it is AB implies D because we have already checked AB is a key. So here the condition for BCNF is also true. Now if you check C implies A, that means C has to be a key. So if you calculate the closure of C, it will give you C as well as A. And by knowing A, there is no such functional dependency that will drive you further. So that means C is not a key. So if C is not a key or super key, that means this relation cannot be in BCNF. Right? Now let's check the another relation, another normal form that is 3NF. In 3NF, we check two conditions. The very first condition, same as BCNF. If X implies Y, then X has to be a super key. Okay. Or if it is not true, then you can say or there is another condition. Or Y has to be a prime attribute. Okay. The meaning of prime attribute is if any of the attribute is the part of the key, then that attribute we consider as the prime attribute. So let's check it. The very first AB implies C. Here AB is a key. So that's okay. The very first condition is true. Next. If AB implies D is given, AB is a key. So if AB is a key, again the first condition is true. Right? C implies A. This C is not a key. So we check the second condition, whether A is a prime attribute. If you are saying AB is a key, then A and B both will be considered as prime attribute. So that means here condition 2 is true because A is a prime attribute. Right? Then B implies D. If B implies D is given, either B should be a key. So if you check B closer, it will give you B and B can give you D. But B, D altogether does not drive you further. So that means B is not a key. If B is not a key, then we need to check the second condition, whether D is a prime attribute or not. No, we can say because AB is a key, but D is not the part of the key. So it is not. That means both the conditions are false on this dependency. So this relation will not be in 3NF. Now let's check whether the relation is in 2NF or not. Now what happens in 2NF? In 2NF, there is one condition. Partial dependencies are not allowed. Partial dependencies. are not allowed, partial dependencies are not allowed. Okay. So that means if you are having AB as a key and you are saying AB implies C, any of the subset of this particular key should not be capable to drive the same attribute. So if I write A implies C also, that means there's a partial functional dependency. If I write B implies C, that means there is a partial functional dependency. So there should not be any partial functional dependency. Then only we can say the relation is in 2NF. So let's check for the given relation. In the given relation, AB implies C is given. 
and we need to find out whether a implies c or b implies c is given it is not given okay here it is given a b implies d so we need to check whether a implies d or b implies d is given if it is given then it it violates the condition and there is a partial functional dependency so here it is given b implies d and a b implies d that means there is a partial functional dependency the relation will not be in 2 nf that means answer would be a only it will be in 1 nf now let's solve this one there are functional dependencies given and we need to identify so let's check first for b c nf now in b c nf we check whether left hand side whatever is given it is a super key or not so we check the closure of x y now x y obviously will have x y and it will have w and z right now if all four attribute we are getting we can say x y is a key so that is okay this is a key now we need to check whether w is a key so if you find out the closure of w you will get w and w is giving you x w x all together is not giving you anything so that means it is not a key so the relation will not be considered in bcnf now let's check for 3nf in 3nf what we check there are two conditions whatever is given in left hand side either that should be a super key or whatever is given at right hand side it has to be a prime attribute so first one xy is a super key that's okay so it satisfies the condition number 1 now when it comes to w implies x because w is not a key so we check whether x is a prime attribute yes because xy is a key then x will be treated as a prime attribute because x is the part of this key so here the second condition is true that means this relation will be in 3 nf now let's solve the next one right so consider the following functional dependencies for a relation r with fd set this if the relation is decomposed into two relation r1 and r2 then it is a lossy joint decomposition or lossless so try to understand if a relation r is having few attribute like a b c d and we are decomposing this relation into two different relations like r1 and r2 now r1 and r2 obviously will be having some attribute those are present in r itself so if we are taking let's say a b here and c d here now you consider let's say we have deleted this relation so it does not exist now by having these r1 and r2 we need to reconstruct the relation r by performing join operation so if we want to perform the join operation between r1 and r2 we can perform the join operation only when there is at least one attribute is common otherwise not so in this scenario there are a and b and there is c and d so there is nothing common that means join is not possible and if join is not possible that means it is considered as lossy decomposition so this is a lossy decomposition in which we will not be able to reconstruct the original relation r now let's check it for considering a relation or decomposition as lossless first thing is we will check like r1 and r2 given here whether something is common in this so if you calculate the intersection of p q r there are three attribute in r1 and i am finding out the common thing so i am calculating intersection of attribute of r1 and r2 here you will find out something common as r so the very first condition is okay there is something common in both the relation so if we want to apply join operation we have some base on which we can apply the join the next condition is whatever is in common it has to be the candidate key either for this relation or for this relation or for both the relations so let's check 
whether R is a candidate key. In order to become R as a candidate key, R must be capable to find out all the relations, all the attributes of either this relation or this relation. So let's calculate. When you are aware about R, obviously you will have R and R can drive S. So you get to know that S, but by having RS, no further dependency is given. So that means R is capable to give you the value of R as well as S. That means R can be the candidate key for this relation R2 because R2 is having only two attributes R and S. So the second condition is also true. Whatever is in common in the decomposed relation, that common attribute need to be the key attribute or candidate key, right? So that means this will be lossless decomposition lossless join decomposition lossless join decomposition we can perform join and we can get the original relation back okay so this is sufficient for this session see you in the next class soon thank you everyone for connecting